So first of all, what does this word implicit? It's not all about. It. It's implied. What's implied? Why? What? What? What's implied about why? Exactly. Perfect. Beautiful. Um, yeah, Logan just ate some earlier. Uh, okay, so yes, exactly. Y is implied to be a function of x. There's implied to be this relationship between x as x changes, y changes. Uh, so we can take the derivative of y as if it's this, it's, it's a, as if it's a function of x, like, uh, like y is an inside function with all this x stuff. We don't know what it is explicitly, we do know it's implied, so uh, the thing that happens there, when we assume y is a function of x, when we take the derivative of something with y in it, when we're taking the derivative with respect to x, not with respect to y, okay, so when we take a derivative of something with a y in it, and it's implied that it's a function of x, what do we use to take the derivative of that? What's that? Well, I said something with y in it, so it not, might not be necessarily that. We need what to take the derivative of it? The chain rule, right? Just, take, just using the chain rule. Just like we would use the chain rule to take the derivative of something like 2x plus 1. Let's say we're taking the sine of 2x plus 1. We would uh, take the derivative of the outside function. Okay, the inside side function is the same. Then we would multiply by the derivative of the inside function. It would be the cosine of 2x plus 1 times 2. Right? Times 2 because the derivative of the inside is 2. Only when it comes time to take the derivative of something with a y in it, it's not explicitly ex expressed as a function of x. And so instead of actually writing what the derivative is, we just say, well, times the derivative of y, whatever that turns out to be, is kind of what we're saying. Right? If you ever found out what the derivative of y was, you could put it here. All right, so with all that information uh, out there, we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, applying all the properties we need to apply to take the derivative, and then solve for, let's call it dy dx. Why dy dx instead of y prime? The change in y and the change of that. Yeah, precisely. It, it says what you're taking the derivative of and what you're taking the derivative with respect to, right? With respect to x. x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. Now we can write y prime, it's just not as specific. So if you wrote y prime, it's absolutely 100% correct. I'm just going to write dy dx. Okay. So let's see, we have a, a function here plus a function here. So we can take the function, uh, take this function here, take the derivative of that first. All right. To take the derivative of this, what do we need? Product rule. Pro yeah, we need the product rule. Uh, so to take the derivative of that, we're going to take the derivative of the first thing times the second plus the uh, first times the derivative of the second. All right, so here we go. Derivative of x squared? 2x times y. And then plus, plus x squared y prime. Squared times the derivative of y, which I said I would write as dy dx. I already lied. Yeah. dy so dx. Much derivative of y with respect to x. Okay. The reason I do that is because today we're going to take the derivative with respect to something else entirely. Okay. So, but not a big deal. So that's done. That's what we want to isolate, right? We'll get that by itself at some point yeah. here. All right, moving on here, we got, again, a product rule. 2y. 2y. X. Or would it be 2y, y prime? Right, we got to take the derivative of the inside function. Y is the inside function. And y is inside of something being squared. dy dx. And then x. Times x. Plus y squared x, or just 1. Times 1, because the derivative of x is just 1. Equals zero. 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 The derivative of a constant is zero. <coughs> okay. So now what what are we trying to do now? You can subtract. You're trying to get the dy dx all by itself. Yes. So we it's if there's a term that doesn't have a dy dx in it, we don't really care to have that on the same side as dy dx. Yeah? So subtract it two x y and the y squared. <laughs> From both sides. Yeah. Okay. Well, to save ourselves a little bit of time and space. Okay. Divide by the x squared and divide by the 2y. 
Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll first, uh, well, on this side, we'll have minus 2xy minus y squared. Uh, over here, we can factor out that factor of dy dx. That was the whole purpose of that exercise, of, of subtracting those from both sides. So we could write it this way, uh, 2xy. And then divide both sides by x squared plus 2xy. And we'll get that dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, is equal to negative 2xy minus y squared over x squared plus 2xy. Big enough that you can see it on the notes when I publish it on the webs. Okay. Uh -oh. Oh, okay. All right. Same idea, just more work to do at the end. What, what was the end of this problem? All right. Actually, let's just take a second and, and admire what we have here. We have the derivative of, of y with respect to x, or the change in y versus the change in x can be found uh, with this expression. Okay? Notice that there's an x and there's y in this derivative. So if we want to know the derivative, it, you know, this derivative, or we want to know the slope, this derivative doesn't just take x and give you the slope, like you know, the, the previous and more the simple ones. Find, that's what we that function. You need to put, you need to, if you have x, you then need to find uh, the output of that function. You need to solve for y, uh, and then put that x and y in here, right? Which uh, may be a little tricky, may be easy. But you need x and y, you need the actual point on the graph, you need a solution to this function right here that you can plug into the derivative. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna take the derivative of this function, same exact, well, not exactly, but the same idea is gonna be done. We're gonna, so we're gonna take the derivative of both sides, solve for dy dx, and then we're going to have dy dx is equal to this expression of x and y. Here we have an x and a y. We can plug in. Yeah? What if you need to put a 4xy on the left side before we set the derivative? Um, I guess what's easier is, is, is subjective. Maybe uh, since we know that the y terms are going to produce y prime terms, we could go ahead and, and isolate them. Y prime on either side of the equation. Like so why not y cubed minus 4xy equals 1 minus x cubed? Not a bad idea, I'm going to foresight there. All right, so we take the derivative of y cubed, y cubed. yeah, y cubed. What, what's that going to look like? 3y uh, squared y squared, squared, squared or dy. You say y prime, it's fine, I'm going to write dy dx. Okay. All right. Minus 4xy, well. Okay, minus 4x times the uh, y Well, okay, or you can. I was then using the cost multiple rule, or we can treat this as one function times another function. So negative minus four, four y. times y, right? Derivative of negative four x is negative four times function y. Yeah. Okay. Then. Y prime. Y prime. Or well, minus four y prime. So I use the product. Minus four dy dx. dx. Yeah. Is just what I'm going to use. Equals. Uh, the negative. Satisfied with that so far? So we add the four y. Whoa. Whoa. This one? Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Because we power. didn't put it. You shouldn't have been satisfied with that. Plug in one side right. here. Say what? You use dy dx so you don't get confused when plugging two terms. No, I use it because it, it, it does emphasize the difference between this and what we're going to do today. 
Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Kendra's right. We should have had an x there because we're we we don't take the derivative of this function. We just take the derivative of this function for the second part of the product rule. Mm. Okay. So now we can get rid of this guy. Add four y to both sides. And at the same time, we'll factor out the dy dx term that both of these have. So we get 3y squared minus 4x equals negative 3x squared plus 4y. Squared? Squared? What squared? Oh, squared. 3x squared. <laughs> Jesus. Squared. Uh, dy dx Why? equals negative 3x squared plus 4y divided by, we're going to divide the whole thing by 3y squared minus 4x. Okay, everybody satisfied with that one? the one one extra part wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, That's embarrassing. That is embarrassing. <laughs> I'd say. Okay, so there is uh, one more part to this. We found the derivative, but then we need to find the slope of this graph. Right? This would produce a graph. Um, yeah. This would produce a graph of, of some kind. It, it, it wouldn't be a most likely it wouldn't be a function, right? It wouldn't pass the vertical line test. We have a couple of three outputs for every input. Um, but we found the derivative, and for this specific point, 2 comma 1, 2 might have several outputs, right? 2 might go with several different outputs. Uh, but this one, 2, 1, is a solution to this equation, so it is a point on this graph. And so to find the slope, we just plug in 2 for x and 1 for y. So let's do uh, dy dx of 2 comma 1, okay? This is a weird notation, but it's, uh, it's acceptable. So 2 squared plus 4 times 1 over um, 3 times 1 squared minus 4 times 2. Uh, so we get negative 12 plus 4 over 3 minus 8, negative 5. So we get uh, negative 8 over negative 5, so 8 over 5. Beautiful. Yeah. Woo. That's better. What does this mean? Second derivative. Means the second derivative. Great job, Connor. How do you find the second derivative? Take the derivative, derivative of the derivative. Take the derivative. take the derivative and take the derivative of the derivative. All right. So the first derivative. Oh, we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So this would just be two x. Oh, never take the derivative with respect to x. Two y dy dx. Equals zero. zero. Zero, this was easy. dy dx. I won't even write too many steps here. We'll subtract 2x from both sides. Divide by negative 2y. So we get x over y. <coughs> okay. Now we take the derivative again. Yeah. Right? The oh, second no, derivative. No, no, no. Right? So the second derivative. is equal to the derivative of this side. Right? The derivative so of the derivative. X over Y. The derivative of X over Y. One over Y. Low D high minus high D low over the square oh, yeah. root below. It's a quotient rule. Silly me. Right? So low D high, this is one, <laughs> minus high D low, Y prime. D Y S. Over the square, what's below? Y squared. 
What's dy dx? Uh, y over, or x over y. It's x over y. So you can make that substitution, right? That is dy dx. y minus uh, x squared over y, right? x times x over y. x squared over y, uh, over y squared. And then. Let's just leave it, huh? <laughs> You can just divide both of them by y squared if you wanted to. Right? So y, uh, y over y squared would be 1 over y minus x squared over y divided by y squared would be x squared over y cubed. Where's the x squared over y? How'd you get that? This? So we got x dy dx. dy dx is x over y. So we replace dy dx with x over y. There's a second derivative for you using implicit differentiation. And now we have this much room, so I'll make it a little bigger. Alright. Questions? I don't see how there could be questions if so many people didn't do their homework or did some of their homework. Are you talking about questions for the homework or questions for this quiz? Hey, either one. Yes. Ten. Ten. Number ten. Good cue, Logan. Okay, yeah. Trig functions. Good question. I'm just not good with the sign and the cosine. You better get good. I know. I'm trying. <laughs> or else. Oh, told me it was that easy. Just like, you know, yeah. Just get good at math. Get easy. I'm not good. You know what getting good at math looks like? Practice. Yeah. It looks like this. So it's like that. You're sitting at your desk and that's what you're doing. That's what getting good looks like. So I must be getting great English then. Like, what am I doing? And that's what's in between the YouTube, like, all the time. That's that's what getting good looks like too. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> Mr. Stewart. Yeah. It looks a lot like chocolate cow. Yeah, <laughs> it looks a lot like chocolate cow. <laughs> <laughs> you're really good at school at Thanksgiving. All right, so we find the derivative uh, with respect to x. All right, so we just take it slow. Let's recognize what we're going to need to do in order to... to do this whole thing, let's kind of like map it out, a little rough map, and then go after it, right? So let's see. We're going to take the derivative of this side. Um, well, we got a constant multiple. It's just a 2 times this stuff. So the derivative, you know, is 2 times just the derivative of the rest of the stuff. So that's, that's good. OK, so when we go to take the derivative of this, uh, well, it's one function times another, so we're going to need the product rule. Um, I know about taking the derivative of that, that's not a big deal. Taking the derivative of that, that's an idea from this section where I'm going to have to use the chain rule on it, there's going to be a y prime, dy dx involved. Okay, so we'll just keep that in mind as we proceed. All right. So, to take the product rule, we take the derivative of the first function. So would it be like cosine, cosine and then of x? Yeah. Yep. And then it'd just be, then it'd be sine, right? Well, it's the derivative of the first times the second. Oh, okay. That's it. Right? Oh, yeah. Minus. Why oh, minus? That's where I went wrong. Oh. Because we would say plus, but if you think about it, we just took the derivative of the sine of the first function. The next step we know is to take the derivative of the second function, oh, the derivative of cosine, and it's be negative. negative. Sine, yeah. So uh, we'll sine just take negative sine, sine of y. Of y, of y, y times the derivative of y with respect to x um, times the sine x, right? That, that's the derivative of the second function, and we just multiply by the first function. Right? f prime g, g prime f. That's exactly what we have here. Yeah, I equals where I went when I tried to do. Okay? So we'll subtract 2 cosine x cosine y from both sides. We'll get negative dy dx. Wait, shouldn't 2 be on the Had too long of a break. Yeah, I think one was too short. 
But then if you divide by two, it's just going to be nothing. True, we can divide by two, we divide zero by two, we just get this. So that's good. Makes it a little easier. Okay. So y, dy is that x, sine x. Oh, that's not it, Luke. <laughs> Negative dy dx, sine y, sine x. Somebody has a question? Is that what I heard? No. Oh, okay. No, sir. Minus uh, cosine, cosine x, cosine y. y. Just subtracted that from both sides. Okay. And then we'll divide, it. divide by negative sine y, sine x. Yeah. dy dx Oops. equals just a formality Oops. here, right? This yeah. Down. We've done it. Cosine y over uh, so negative sine y, sine x, and Negative divided by negative is positive, so you just get those. It's done. Okay. Yeah, I, I was doing very well. Don't don't get intimidated when you see. Well, don't have, try not to get intimidated. You see, like, oh, man, the string well, functions are multiplied, all right? I Start know. with what am I looking at? I'm just looking at product of two functions. Okay, that means the product rule. Got that? No problem. When it comes time to take the derivative, just take the derivative of each small part when it comes time to do that. Cosine. Derivative of cosine, I know that. Derivative of sine, I know that. It's cotangent. Should be too long. So could you s like simplify Wait, that down? Over sine cotangent x, cotangent y. Cosine x over sine x, yeah, that would be cotangent, cotangent. So cotangent x, cotangent y, if you wanted. Okay. Sure. Hello. 30? 30. I heard of 30. Oh, I'm from Calico. And then they give us this point two two. So it says find the slope of the tangent line to the graph at the given point. And you can see the picture there. Uh, the point two two is on the graph. They want to know the slope of that line, that tangent line. Well, to find the slope, there's this really cool thing that tells you the slope. And what's it called? The derivative tells you the slope. So we're going to take the derivative. The derivative. OK, so on this side we have a function times another function. We're going to use the product rule. Over here, that side's going to be easy. We might as well just do that side right now. 3x squared. Over here we have a product of two functions. So we're going to do f prime g, g prime f. f prime g plus g prime f. All right, so what's the derivative of this function? 1. Negative 1. Negative 1. Negative one. Negative one. Negative 1 times y squared. That's right. Plus? 4 minus x. 4 minus x, sure. 4 minus x. 2y, y prime. 2y. dy dx. <laughs> I'm not trying to force you to say dy dx. This is what I'm writing. Okay. Makes emphasis for today's lesson anyway. Okay, okay so um, we're going to add y squared to both sides. Okay? Yeah, we're going to dy dx. Uh, times all this stuff equals 3x squared plus y squared. And then what are we going to do next? Uh, and we got all this stuff right here, 4 minus x times 2y. Divide. Divide by all that, so we're going to divide this by 4, four minus, minus x, x and 2y. You can distribute the 2y if you want. Simplify it if you want to. Get to it. It's done. And all we really are wanting to do, the answer to the question is the slope of the tangent line. How do we find the slope of the tangent line? for x, 2 for y. 3 times 2 squared plus 2 <laughs> squared over 4 minus 2 <laughs> times 2 <laughs> times 2. <laughs> 12 plus 4, 16. Yeah. Yeah. Over 4 minus 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. The slope is 2. Yeah, I do that close. What? Oh, Get it all wrong, don't look. I'm thoroughly embarrassed. I need everyone. But now I know how to do it. I tried to do it this morning. 8 over 16? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess negative 32. Well, let's pass in our homework, huh? Well, 
what is the Yes, what is Yes, what is the Yes, what is the Yes, That's hard. So I hear today is the Okay. Oh, we get candy, don't we? We get candy today. Yay! 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 It's a main oh my God. pillar to the lesson. We need candy. candy. I need some energy. We need candy. Dark right. favorite is eating Callie All right, so here I'm going to. We found it. I'm going to pitch a little commercial to you about what we're doing today. Okay. Uh, any, of you have, any of you have jobs? Yeah. Okay. You don't have a job in schools like your job, and you work all week long, right? Yeah. You get to the weekend and you work more. You work good. Right? So no, you work one day. You blow up all your stuff. And then you, you black cloud. <laughs> and then you take your work home with you. You don't work on weekends? I know you do. And you don't get overtime. See? No. You do. Yeah, exactly. have kids. That's You're telling job. me that you don't kids do any of your school work at home? Sometimes, but rarely. He gets here like five in the morning. He he I do my like weekend five. work in the morning. What time do you get here? Uh, you get here before Kucho. He gets here before, he gets here before, before basketball practice. Kucho is sleeping cozy in his bed when I get here. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, those are fighting words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he's he's in his slippers reading the paper or something. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, so you still didn't answer what time you forgot. Oh, let's see. Four thirty. No, no, no way. way. Do you just not sleep? No, I sleep. What time do you go to bed? What time? Time to sleep. Nine. 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 Ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three. What time do you? Wait. Three. 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 Oh, oh, that's horrible. horrible. How do you live? <laughs> How anyway, do you live? so you work. Four thirty. The weekend comes. You get to do all this fun stuff on the weekend. So for me, uh, this is one of those things in the curriculum. It's like just such a treat to me. It's like the weekend of the curriculum. We work hard and we learn all this stuff, and then we get to use it. We actually get to apply it to like actual real situations. I mean, in in other subjects, algebra, every other stupid math subject, stupid. That you do oh, wow. Wow. wow! This is you. you you're learning. Uh, you know. Linear, linear function. Oh, one step equation. Hey, everyone shut up. Did we get that? Did we get that recorded? <laughs> you said yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> they they try to apply it to real life, but it just doesn't apply. Right? These these weird situations or or really Maybe boring nice. situations yeah. that don't really work, <laughs> and they try to make you like uh, these these books crack me up. But the, like the beginning of each section, not these ones, the algebra ones, and geometry. They they have this picture of like a kid. Ride a skateboard. Like yeah. it, like it's gonna feel like riding a skateboard when you're doing this math or something. <laughs> and then like why should you do this? You can learn about this jump in a skateboard. But then like you crash you're never gonna use that. And, and to be fair, you're probably not gonna use this again. But it's like it actually could model an actual situation that really happened, and that's what we're gonna do today. Or at least model it really closely. Okay? In algebra books you have to really fudge it. Like the world doesn't really work this way. Okay? But what we do with calculus when we use that, we can get these complicated functions that actually model real life situations um, really closely. Yeah, all right. But can you figure we needed all that stuff that the, the chain rule and yes. implicit differentiation and product rule and all that stuff to, to get to this point, right? Um, so to me, it's a treat, it's a lot of fun. It's not easy, right? It is a challenge, but it, it works. It really works and it really applies to real life uh, in, in, a, in a real way, an actual way, a realistic way. Okay? So that's what I'm going to say about that. It's going to be a challenge, but uh, and, and it is a challenge for every uh, class that has been taught related rates by me or any other calculus teacher. 
it's been a challenge. Um, I'm going to do my best to help you through it. And the thing about this year, I have, uh, I'm just ripping off this other calculus teacher, who's ripping off another calculus teacher <laughs> who had a really cool idea. Uh, we're going to do that today. And um, it's going to be amazing. really confident. Like the lab that we did at the beginning of the year, you guys caught on to the stuff I was trying to teach you a lot faster than the previous years we had that lab. And kids are better. Oh, yeah. Yes! That's on tape, too. You're better than them still, and we have this lab that I think is really going to be cool, okay? But the first thing we have to do is we're going to talk about this uh, this chart, what's on the chart, and how we're going to figure out what's on the chart. So what I'm going to give you in just a few minutes, you're going to get a, a job breaker, and you're going to get some flops. Okay? That's what you're going to get. So before we move forward, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to have you guys, like, Talk amongst yourselves, whatever you're going to come up with. This is how we're going to answer your question. Okay, so let's let's hear the question. Um, calculus two point six. There we go. Um, all right, so you're going to get uh, a piece of paper like this to, to fill in some data. Okay. Now all I'm giving you is a jawbreaker and a piece of floss. And you can see what I want you to do is to find first the radius of the jawbreaker at any given moment. Okay? So talk amongst yourselves, or if you think you gotta just sit there all smug, don't talk to anybody. I'm not too. Just decide how are you gonna use this floss to measure the radius of this jawbreaker. Okay, so talk about it for like a minute. Isn't there a way to do a measure of why? Can we measure the floss? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can measure the length of the floss. Okay. No, no, I don't want your answer to answer. Talk to each other. Radius squared. Two pi r. And then two pi d. It's two pi r. Look it up. Look at the front covers of your books. It's divided by pi. Divided by two. I don't think that's it. Or maybe it's in the back. Yeah, it's in the back. It's in the back. Geometry stuff in the back. Yeah. Algebra. Circumference divided by six. Circumference two pi r. Two a. Divided by six point seven. Yeah. Cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's more complicated than that. Yeah. You measure the. Yeah. I feel like he's not telling us. I'll. You know, I should. I'll give you some rules as well. Would you really be asking this? I'll draw the ruler. Well. Yeah. Draw the ruler. I tell you what, though. This is good. It really is. How fast? Yeah, the world I never know. Should have said that. <laughs> Not really. Like that. Yeah. All right, so uh, Callie, given this floss and this gumball, or this jawbreaker, and uh, this ruler, how are you going to find the radius of the jawbreaker? It'll be a string over 2 pi. String <laughs> over 2 pi? <laughs> circumference? To the length of the string over 2 pi? Yeah. How did you arrive there? Um, so the circumference is equal to um, 2 pi r. And then you get r by itself. You get r so by itself. So circumference is the measure of the string. So you so take the floss around the, yeah. the outside, mm -hmm. right? Uh, around the, uh, a, uh, what's so called a, a great arc of the, uh, of the jawbreaker that's yeah. right around the, like, the equator. Of the gumball. So you solve for R. A. The bag of marbles? Yeah. Do you remember when we do the bag of marbles? Do you still have the bag of marbles? What bag of marbles? What bag of marbles? What? Probability? No, that you drew last oh. year. What? I don't know. It's somewhere. Yeah. What? He drew this perfect bag of marbles. He drew it to like proportion and the marbles were all 3D. So bad. It's so good. Okay, so that's how we're going to find the radius. Now, how are we going to find the volume? Volume of the circle sphere. Volume of the circle sphere. Four over three times pi r cubed. Okay, so volume is equal to four thirds pi r cubed. Is yeah? that supposed to be a chapter or is it supposed to be a chapter? I was just wondering what it's it is. So we find r, we take r, we put it into four thirds pi r cubed, and there we have the volume. Okay, so what we're going to do is. Uh, we're going to, oh, I'll have a timer up here. We'll all put the job breakers in our mouths. We'll all have our own, right? We don't have to work with a partner on this very uh -oh. gross lab. Um, 
So pass it out in stages. So here, you're responsible to pass those out. Hey, I want a red one. Red, purple one. Or yellow one. You can trade. Yeah, you pass. I'm going to those out in there. Contain. Yeah, contain. Contain the best. Really? You can get that. <laughs> <laughs> I want a red one. It's like giant. Oh, okay. I'm so excited. <laughs> No! That was red. Is it actually orange? Yeah, oh, I don't know what I like. Don't crack them. Do you get floss? I do you have floss? If they crack, then just, you know, get another one. Well, Mr. Turner, how long do you want to be Long enough do you think you can measure the outside of the, uh, the jawbreaker? Here, here, you can use mine. Oh, no, Thank you. No one has yellow. I want a yellow. Oh, yellow. Oh, yellow. Oh, yellow. Oh, Don't put them in your mouth. Yeah, we want to just oh. all work out the same time table here. Here you go. Oh. Everyone get some floss. Hey, we got that on ground. We ain't giving you one. Okay. Oh, okay. So classically, related race is a challenging subject, but the cool thing about this lab is you get to like each one of you gets to experience fully be involved with an actual related race problem. Right. The thing about related race is it's, it's hard to put yourself in a situation. Right. So we'll, we'll do this, we'll get actually involved and immersed in the, in the problem, and then future ones, well, they should be easier. I don't know if they'll be easy. They'll be easier. Okay? So um, let's get started. We'll do, we'll do one minute at first. Hold on, I'll get the, the timer ready. Wait, should we measure the initial? Um, I think that's pretty important. We it's not it case. that important, but it will help us. It should be, we should do that. Let's go ahead and take our initial measurement. I should have put a zero minute there. What? Come on! You can just put that up here. I don't know where the put it right here. Sorry. Also right here. Okay. 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 okay, while you do that, I'll get this time ready. Are we doing it centimeters or inches? Your choice. Whatever you like. You know, metric is more... Feet. Whoa, it's like zapped. Yeah. Yep. What'd you say, Kendra? If I can get it. It's about six. Yep. It's six centimeters. Six centimeters. Six centimeters. Six centimeters. This jawbreaker company is really, uh, make sure you get the measurement of your jawbreakers as, as accurately as possible. Don't go off to six centimeters. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's six centimeters, guys. Yeah. Huh? This is millimeters. Yeah, six, six millimeters. Six point five millimeters. No, millimeters are the smaller one. Not kids. These are centimeters. Those are centimeters. Come on, guys. Millimeters the millimeters the is, the, is the little one. Okay. Oh, man. Like, this has one sixteenth of an inch. It's, it is confusing, though. You would think they put a little bit of a centimeter. You'll put it by the little one. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I got six. Yeah. It doesn't really matter when I mean, you think about I got it, six. By, right? So Does it really matter yeah. whether it's millimeters or centimeters? It's oh, no. How many decimal points do you want to go out to? Well, you can only go to as many millimeters as you have. I don't know. I mean, like decimal points, like one would be the radius. Like oh. pi by pi. Um, uh, and do you want to use pi or like 3.14? Use pi. Okay. So. Hey, the two. Hang on. Yeah, I go to two decimal no. places for the radius. Two. Uh, nine. Nine, six. Six? Mm -hmm. six. Divided by five. 
That's you measured around. Five. Oh, God, I think so. Oh, shoot, not the. Did you use a different circumference? I got six. 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 My circumference was point Wait, nine. Wait, did you use three point one four for pi? Like I did that. Uh, you get point nine. Uh, Wait, what's your yeah. radius? Six. Okay. Oh, point nine five. Did you use more decimal places? Oh, yeah, I did more. I just used more than six. Oh, wait, no, I used all my decimal places. Six, four, seven, two. I used the point nine. Yeah, I know that's going to work. Three point six, four, seven. Well, I knew. Good thing. All right, how are we doing? We got it? That's not it. One minute. No. That's not it. Oh, my God. What if I have a real Oh, wait. I don't have a one minute. How about if we uh, let's use let's let's be smart, okay? Go let's work smarter, not harder. Let's make a couple of functions, right? Oh, oh yeah. What were the first one will be the radius function. Oh, oh that would be smart. <laughs> okay, so, uh, God, right. okay. So take x whoa, 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 whoa. over two pi. X over two pi. Two pi. Yeah. Now wait, this is the coolest part, right? Oh. What does that give you? Radius. The radius. What are we going to do with the radius? Divide. Are we going to do this? Yeah. Four thirds by r cubed. Yeah. Right. R is whatever you get out of this function. Yeah. All right. So watch this. R. Four thirds uh, times pi times r cubed. The result of this. Okay. Watch this. You press this key right here. Variables. R's. Variables. R's. Variables. Y variables. Functions. One. Which, Which function? Y one. Yes. That's so cool. So let me take that and cube it. Function. Um, <laughs> cool. Function. Bars. Variables. Bars. Bars. All right. Move over to y variables. Okay. Function. Just hit enter on function, and then you can pick y one. Right. So this will calculate whatever the radius is. That result will go in here. Then you can go in. And then we look at the table. So if I had a radius of six. So cool. Alright, yeah, circumference of 6, radius of 0.95493, and a volume of 3.6476. How do you insert stuff again? How do you what? Or how do you, like, you know, put it in the next value? Uh, you go to table set, second oh, table set, to make sure this is oh. independent of our ass. Okay. Logan doesn't get a new one. Logan doesn't get a new one. Logan doesn't get a new one. <laughs> Logan sucks. Yep. All right, we ready to start the first. Logan <laughs> <laughs> sure is ready. Mr. Stewart, can you go back to that anymore? Don't put that one in your mouth. You have to. No, don't eat it. Why just dry? I will. Okay. Oh. Don't be a child. Do it. Oh. Have some self. Whoa. Have some dignity, some self-respect. Yeah. Have some hygiene. Any of those things. And put it in your mouth. Ready? Yeah. Logan. Why one there? Okay. Perfect. Okay. okay. Now I'm going for speed. I'm. This is this is going to use the order of operations that we've been using. You know, division and multiplication work from left to right. So four divided by three times pi times y cubed, or y one cubed. So that's all correct. Okay. So that'll save you, right? You'll just punch in your circumference. Boom. Both both values are given. All right, you ready to start the first minute? Are we ready? Yes. Okay. Wait, Logan needs a new one. Huh? Which what? Okay. Which one? Every minute we're going to take them out, and then we're going to measure the circumference again, and then we're going to calculate the radius of the volume. I'm going to down this thing. <laughs> now! I'll eat it. I'll eat it if you want me to, though. Don't eat it. Do you want a new one? 
Don't eat it. Drop down the ground. Makes a difference to me. Just my hard earned money. Kind of my hard earned money. It's kind of just disgusting over there. It bounced on my own tiny points like five times. No, it rolled around. It rolled around. It rolled. It rolled around. Okay, I do want to get through this day. So, are you ready to start this first minute? Yes. It's gonna be speedy. Okay, so. At the ready, and then when I when I hit the, the timer, then finishes. we'll just pop them into our mouths, okay? Yeah. Now only suck on them. Don't bite them. Don't break them. Yeah. Just suck just on them. Ready? Go. Ready? <laughs> Go. Alright. They're not bad. It's not I had to run one to make sure that they were good solid for the last 10 minutes. I had another one. Rush to measure it. You measure it in a, a, a good amount of time, but no, don't drop them. Oh, man. All right. So measure it. <laughs> measure your Nobody circumferences. Callie, you just lost your You almost lost your Oh, no, you can find it. Okay. Hey, if the ball sticks. You're reducing the circumference by doing that. I'm getting it dry. I don't like the leftover of my mouth. Yeah, why don't we all wash our hands? <laughs> yeah, every single time. I can't touch it. Wash your hands. It's a little easier to measure when it's sticky. Mine's still at six. Yeah, it is. It's definitely. Mine is once a half or less. One millimeter. One millimeter? One centimeter. Like, and we have to stick these on our rulers. I'm going to redo it because I don't believe that it's still at six. Yeah. Just dissolving. Oh, mine says it's longer, so yeah, I don't think I did either. it right. <laughs> 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 so I don't. Mine's like the same. No. One of the two. Uh, that is like the same. One of the two. No, literally, that's my thing. Mm. Yeah. Like I should borrow some micrometers from the shop. So, do we go in the millimeters? millimeters? What's that? Do we go in millimeters? Oh, so I think like millimeters or centimeters. Like like five point eight. Like five point eight. Like centimeters, yeah. <laughs> 5.8? Did it reduce that much? I, not much. Mine was 5.4. Mine was like 5.5. Mine was probably like super acidic. Mine was like 5.5. Yeah. Mine was probably like super acidic. Mine was probably like super acidic. Mine was You got a red one. You got an orange one. What color do you have? Uh, I think it was red. What did you get? 5.5. Probably like super acidic saliva or something like that. That's weird that they do that. It's a good bio thing. What? I, I use my mind. We get to find out whether our saliva is basic or or what? And then Can we go into Google and ask them to do that? Serious. We can do the same lab in there for a different reason. Or no, 10. Yeah. All right. Can we take it again? No. No. You don't know. Let's send all that now. I just realized that. Hey, give him a brain. All right. Let's go. Gross. Here we go. No! Oh, we're doing it No! Oh, no! no. You are just amazing. If you're just making calculations, then we could go ahead and get started on the next minute. That's true, because we could do the calculations. I'm not starting yet, I'm just resetting it, so I don't do anything yet. Ah, uh, no, I think your graph should be straight up. I don't know how to. Go away, Kathy! When Callie talks to her things, you know there's a problem. <laughs> okay, here we go. Are we ready? Yep. Yep. Alright, get them ready. Here we go. That's all.
Seen some change? Is that right? It changes yes. less. Good. Less, huh? than less than last time? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Dude. Oh. oh. That's rough. Oh, that's bad. really yeah, rough. Five, four, one, just think of dust. <laughs> Mine was <laughs> <down to> five. <laughs> yeah. Holly, I think we have some fun sitting on the saliva. Five. <laughs> Actually. Well, I gave you plates to keep it contained. Oh, is this fun? It went down at the same time. Like Mine just, mine rocketed down. Whoa, dang, yours looks so small. Yeah, it does. Keep going for the speed, man. <laughs> Mine's... So we've done times... Mine's times at five. Times zero. Or times seven, nine, one, eight. eight. And we've done, we're at... Times two. Times two, two minutes. Times two, two minutes. Two minutes. Don't know. Once you're ready, then just, uh... Mm -hmm. Then hit somebody with your ruler, I guess. Hit somebody? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to pull out. Oh, you did it. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. All right, now that you got the, the hang of it, sorry, I'm ready. I'm gonna we're gonna change the time interval. It's gonna be two minutes. Okay. Whoa. And we're skipping three. So we're gonna skip three. Right now, our next is gonna be four. All right. So we're gonna go up to two minutes. This was a waste of a lot of time. Um, well, yeah. there's, some, there's something that I want to do between, because all we're doing now is just <coughs> sucking up a job breaker, and, and we don't really need to think that hard about it. Okay, go! Okay, go ahead. Not, not yet. Okay. Ready? Okay. Here we go. One, two, three, go. <laughs> all right. So while we're doing that, um, oh, back here, let's see if we can just... Find it! Find it! Do some AP what? stuff here. Huh. Now this is from... This is from 2.4. This is not implicit differentiation. This is uh, the chain rule. Okay, so uh, we're just gonna be looking at. That. Maybe we'll just. Uh, I can't see the very I'm gonna pull it out of the next page because it is hard to see. And I'll either recolor it or make it bigger or both. I'm getting real sick of these. Brown. I'm gonna turn your taste bad. <laughs> oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. It's not fun. Do you have arms looking? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright, so we have a, we have a minute set here, so uh, why don't you, on your, in the back of that paper or on your notebooks or whatever, see if you can uh, handle taking the derivative of this function, see which one of these is the derivative of that function. Seconds. If we don't get this done, we'll just come back to it on our next mm -hmm. our next uh, update. Four, three, two, 
right, let's measure again. Definitely small. Oh, mine's tiny. Kendra, I know why I'm trying to do Oh my god. This whole class is easy. Hannah, you're not the same. Touch us? We're not going to touch them. Yeah, we're not. We're not dumb. We're not awesome class. Let's touch John. Yeah, like that. Got it. you need more floss or something, I got more floss. So you're smacking your lips? Yeah, another plate or something. job breaker does just completely dissolve, That's then just together. make a note of where the timer's at, okay. and then you can figure out exactly where you are in that. Well, the calculations will be the same, but the, the time uh, that's passed by will be different for you, so you can make a note of that. Okay. Here we go. Is everybody ready? Are we going to two minutes again? Yeah, another two minutes. So skip to five? We're going to skip oh, five, go right to six. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. reset the time. Just resetting the timer, it's not starting yet, hold on. Oh. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Tiny YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, looking at this problem, we've got uh, 3x squared minus 1 cubed. We've got the inside function and the outside function. So take the derivative of the outside, what's that look like? 3, three nine, times 3x three 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 squared three minus 1 to the second. Then what? Multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Mm -hmm. The inside function is 3x squared minus 1. What's the derivative of this? 2x. 2x? 6x. Six 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 six. And then we can bring this and combine with that. We get 18x times 3x squared minus 1 squared. That's A. Number A. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, I get started on that. I got 55 seconds. Go measure again. Tender. Oh my god. Mine's so big to measure this. I'm definitely going to lose mine in the next time. Me too, Bing. So we did four, we skipped five, now we're on six. Stop at six for our data. 
So this will be the last measurement you take. You're, you're welcome to throw them away or continue to eat them while we uh, work from here. So we can just eat them now? You can just do whatever. Once you get your final measurement, we're going to let this be the final measurement. We got some data. We got some data. So you can was a sucker, that would be a little easier because it has a stick, but also, you can't really find any spherical suckers. Without the... the no, two pops. No, they have the like, ray. Like the yeah. rim. Yeah. yeah, they got a rim, and they're not spherical, they're like this weird... Ovalish. Yeah, ovalish shape. Then you got the dum-dums, but I don't, I don't want to call you dum-dums. They're really small to start with. Oh, Kendra. Where's that 2.5? Huh? Well, it's it's super super <laughs> well then, I mean, you just have to sit. Yeah, maybe the big job breakers would be would be better. You should have just gotten like you know, a huge. Can't put, mm -hmm. can't put home <laughs> one. Five dollars per job. I just ran out of IGA and I got what they got. Yeah, we saw you. All right. So, all right. Here's the kind of question we're gonna ask. We're gonna ask how fast are these things changing at any given moment? Okay. So the job breaker is in your mouth, and what are you doing to the job breaker? Applying saliva. Applying heat. Mm -hmm. right, yes. what? Yeah. Melting it. Okay. I don't Resolving. Know. I don't know exactly. Like Resolving more than melting. It. Dissolving it. What about the jawbreaker are you changing the geometrically? The circumference. And the size. Okay. What? Now, theoretically, theoretically, what are you changing consistently? The outside volume. The volume, right? You're taking away a little bit of juice. Theoretically, at a consistent rate. Right? And it's it's reducing the size because you're directly affecting the volume, right? And theoretically, here's the important part, theoretically, that rate of change is a consistent rate of change throughout the whole thing, right? Assuming that it's made of uh, pretty much the same stuff all the way through. All right? Until the middle. Maybe the middle. So that's where we need to get to the middle, maybe. It's a good idea. Uh, how about, let's take a look at that. What? Are your rates of change of the of the volume consistent throughout? You gotta take a look at your data to figure that out. Yeah. yeah. For every minute that passes, does the same amount of volume go away? Mm -hmm. No. No. Mm -hmm. no. The first minute was faster. But it's a different surface area. First minute was first faster. Like, you know, not like to the point. Yeah, it goes by. Uh, maybe close to maybe. Uh, to one decimal place, maybe even faster. Okay. So why don't, we, why don't we calculate that? Why don't you, between each of them, mark what the rate is, right? How fast is it changing? And keep in mind, those later ones are over two minutes, not one minute. <coughs> the, uh, the first minute might be faster, like maybe that candy stuff on the outside is easier to dissolve than so what do you stuff want to inside. Do? To find the rate of change in the volume between each set of data, right? Right, centimeters or millimeters, whatever, that you're using cube per minute. Wait, what? How fast is that volume changing? <coughs> we got here we got 3.6475. What are you using? Centimeters? Mm -hmm. Centimeters cubed, right? Using centimeters. From here to there, there's been a change. Right? Subtract and that's over a period of one minute. You just subtract those? I don't know if that's how you have a D. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So between each each volume data point, find out how fast it's changing. Is it is it fairly consistent? I don't know. I I, I this is theoretical because um, I'm just hoping that's the case. If the way you were sucking on the jawbreaker was consistent, and if the material is of consistent density throughout, then we should see something fairly consistent in the change of volume. <coughs> Maybe if you 
if you did leave enough room, you could make another column. So then you divide by 300? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want to permit a change here, right? We want to know if it's consistent. Is it consistent this amount per minute? It's going to be off a little bit. How much is it off by? Look! A little over half a centimeter. Half a cubic centimeter. Cubic centimeter. Half a cubic centimeter. Consistently, it's off that much? Like, no. The first one, it got like 0.3 of a cubic centimeter longer than like. How do we do 0.5 per minute, 0.525 per minute, 0.25 per minute. Or do you want to do Is anybody getting anything consistent per minute? No. We're kind of stuck in a different room. I really like that. I really like that. The purple one's stuck. Hey, you asked for purple? I asked for yellow. I asked for purple. I assumed it was just for the ease of measuring. Wait. Uh, who feels like they've got some good data? They really paid attention and measured carefully? I did mine. Um, took measurements carefully? Let me see here. Can I make sure I'll Here we start off with a, a time zero point nine five uh, radius. So you used is that centimeter? Yeah, .95 centimeters. Okay, at one minute. Wait, there's point nine five again. Yeah, didn't change. Liar. No, I don't know about that. Point eight seven. Let's do it again. Point seven four. Point six six. Change from here to there is 0.84. This is centimeters cubed. This would be centimeters cubed per minute. Um, 0.525 centimeters cubed per minute. That's for two minutes. No, it's not. Okay, and then 0.25 centimeters cubed per minute. I did not. Okay. Okay. Mine is kind of like that though. It slowed down, like the radius yeah. just slowed down. Okay. So maybe it just maybe this thing gets denser as you work your way in. Why is that? Because there's a smaller surface area on the outside, and so the resolving rate stops. I think well, that would be a lot more even if we would well, put it on the house. You, you should, though, it's like, if, if it's smaller, even still, like, you're just going to take away, like, that, that whole thing really quickly, and the next layer after that, and the next layer after that. Whereas if it's really big, like, depending on how much you're dissolving it, you might not even, like, take off the entire outside layer. Like, you, like some of yours were still orange or red or had a little bit of color after that first minute. Right? So you didn't even take off that first surface, right? You know, it's kind of continual and, and the thickness of the color is going to be different on different parts of it. So you would, you would still be taking off the same amount, taking the volume away at a steady rate. And so you'd just be taking away layers faster and faster and faster. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, um, let's see. 
I wanted this to be a consistent rate of change. Um, shoot, I guess I need to use something other than drop breakers because I must make them denser in the middle, which makes sense. Um, but let's talk about this. Okay, what what is this? This number. Rate what of is change. It? Rate, of change. rate of change of what? Volume. Of volume. Rate of change of volume with respect to what? Radius. Radius. No, circumference. No, no. X. Y. The volume. With respect to the volume? With respect to the minutes? To the minutes. Oh. To the minutes. Oh. I was going to say that next. Right? We're getting there. So it's how the volume is changing with respect to how much time has gone by. Right? Yeah. Change in volume versus the change in time. Oh, I see. I'm going to be on the y-axis. Yeah, and then I would be here. Right. So the the change. The change in volume. Yeah. So, so a way we could express this in, in something called Leibniz notation, which is that notation where we say like dy dx or whatever. I'm going to ask you. D what? dv over dt. dv over dt. Perfect. No, no. It's the change in volume with respect to the change in time. Right? Uh, the volume changes 0.84 cubic centimeters in, in one minute, right? So the actual the rate of change is negative, right? Because we're losing volume, right? And here the rate of change is negative 0.525, and the, the rate is negative 0.25 cubic centimeters per minute, dv dt. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Uh -huh. right? nice. If we had a function that told us the volume, how would we find out how the volume is changing with respect to time? Take the derivative of it with respect to time. Time. Okay? It's just all flowing right out of your brains. <laughs> wow! It's amazing. Okay. Let's do this. Um, I'm going to skip past our AP stuff here. Okay? I'm going to bring in this table. Do you want your rulers on? Uh, put it right here. I do. Put our rulers. Well, I'll just have you drop everything on that table as you leave here in a minute. You don't want us to throw this away? Uh, you can throw the, the, the throwawayable things you can throw away. And the return things you can return. But not right now, hey, we've got, we've got time here. Let's not waste it. We've got time. <laughs> All right, um, so let's say we want the, uh, the rate of change to be consistent and we want the rate of change dv dt, we want to depend. Uh, we want dvdt to be consistent over the whole thing. We're just going to have to kind of fudge this. And I learned my lesson for next year. OK, so let's say we want it to be negative 0.5 cubic centimeters per minute. And you have to That's logical. OK. Um, so we want this to be consistent. So what my average was. Here, this was uh, 2.8 cubic centimeters. Okay, and then what was the volume up here? What was the volume before this, before it changed half a cubic centimeter? Six. It was 2.8 here. 3.3. 3.3? Okay, we'll just say it's all in centimeters cubed. All right, how about after that? 2.3. 2.3. 1.8. 1.8. What is it? 1.3. 1.3. 1.8. Okay. Negative. So let's say that the that the rate of change of the volume <laughs> is consistent. Right. Every minute that goes by, we lose a half of a cubic centimeter. Yeah. All right. So then, what would the radius have been? Um. I think if we go backwards, got to figure out what the radius would be if yeah. this was the volume. Well, we got V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. So r equals the cubed root of V times uh, 3 fourths, 3 over 4 pi. 
And then you have to do the, put the three on the outside of the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so if we were to use our calculators. <laughs> yeah. Do. Hey, it's done. Do the root. Uh, so I'll just read everything in one third power. About that. So x times 3 over 4 pi. x times 3 over 4 pi to the one third power. <laughs> so I was at 3.3. We get a radius of 0.924. What'd you get? Oh, just kidding. Never mind. Uh, 2.8. 0.874. 0.8. Uh, if you can get these faster than me, that'd be great. Nobody gets a gold star today. No what? No gold star for anyone. Sure, you would plug them all in. I just told you. Huh? You would plug them all in. I have to write them down one on one, so no, you could have everybody memorize one. Yeah. Anyway, we're here. Okay. So the volume's changing consistently. Is the radius changing consistently? Yes. No. No. Kind of. Close. It's close, but it's not. It's like at about point, no, zero six. So this is what we were, we were talking about uh, earlier when Gavin said, you know, when it gets smaller, then it should change slower. But the volume should change, volume should change consistently. Fast. But to get that consistent volume, you're going to have to take off like an entire layer of that uh, of that jawbreaker and another layer, another layer, another layer. So actually, the radius should be changing faster and faster. And yeah, faster. I got that. So. And that's what should do we see that? Do we see a bigger change as we go down? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's the question. Now we're taking this data and we can look at the average rate of change between two data points. Okay? Mm -hmm. But even if I take this radius minus this radius, which will give me a uh, 0.55? 0.055? Is that right? Is that wrong? 0.874 minus 0.819. Yep. 0.055. Uh, oh, no. Hey, come on. Uh, Stop looking through them. Pretty. All right. Even if we find that this that between here and here, there's a, a change of negative 0 0.055 centimeters. What does that even mean? Like, when, when is it changing that much? When is the radius decreasing that quickly? In well, between that minute. At two minutes to three, two minutes or three minutes? Or? Between, I mean, at what minutes. moment? It's continuous. That's, that's the average. It's the average rate of change over that one minute, right? It's a slope. It is a slope between this point and that point, but. Like this isn't a straight line. Like, like the graph of this would be a straight line because the radius is changing faster and faster and faster, yeah. right? Yeah, but like the like change would be kind of like that would be yeah, a half curve. Like, kind of curve. Yeah, like an input and output. Kind of so what we want to ask? Uh, stop! 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 Stop rustling! Stop rustling! Um, we want to ask. Well, let's say. Okay. 
So we want to find out how fast is it changing when the time is such and such. When we have a function that relates the volume and the radius, so how would we relate the change in the volume to the change in the radius? Exactly. With respect to time, but the time doesn't have to be 5.5 until after we take the derivative. Okay. So with respect to t, d b d t, right? That's what we're doing. The derivative of the left side is easy. It's just d prime, right? Or d b d t, just to remind us that we're taking the derivative uh, uh, with respect to t. Yeah. Okay. Because we know how fast the volume is changing, right? That's consistent. Theoretically, it was supposed to be consistent. Okay. It's the radius, the change in the radius that's changing, right? change itself is changing. It's getting faster and faster and faster, right? Or more and more negative, let's say. Okay, so we take the derivative of this. Well, this is just 4 thirds pi. That's a constant. So 4 thirds pi times the derivative of r cubed with respect to t. Okay. Two. Three r squared times d r d t. Yeah. Right? And then we can simplify this, like this oh, 3 will cancel with this 3. Yes. Oh, is that why you started doing the dy dx? What dy dx So we get 4 pi r squared dr dt equals dv dt. We have to actually 2.6. For homework, yeah. Alright, have a good day, everybody. Set up an equation and take a derivative. Uh -huh. The basics right. of what I can tell you right now. Okie doke. Whoa, where did this